My name is Dvir. I'm a VP Product Operations in eToro. My experience is in uh, product management operations as a developer, uh, development management, and uh, a lot of uh, experience in operations, not only in uh, software companies. And with me is David. Hi, my name is David. I am currently leading the DevOps efforts in eToro. I am an R&D manager and a web programmer. So, we want to tell you a bit about the journey we've been heading in the last year. And as you can see, it's not a very small organization anymore, so reculturing it and moving into DevOps is a challenge. A few words about eToro. We're in the junction of the internet and the finance world. We're uh, bringing finance to the area of social networks. And our main product is something that probably many of you would always want or always wanted to have. Who's here is investing his money in some ways actively? Uh, I bet that everyone that is doing it is always thinking, oh, how could I do better? How could I learn from others? And what we offer in eToro is a, a social network of investments where everybody can see what everybody else is doing, their gains, their risk, their investment profile, of course, uh, all the history of their uh, success and failures. And then you can choose those that are the best and copy them. So if you see that David is doing great, you can put a hundred dollars or a thousand or more on him and whatever, whatever he will do will happen the same in your account. So if he bought gold or Apple for 2% uh, of his portfolio, 2% of your thousand dollars that you invested in him will uh, be bought in your account with the same rates and we actually do we we actually see that it goes great we see that investors that copy others are doing much much better than investors that are just manually picking their uh, investments so uh, this is about our product it's going very well and now for the challenges that uh, we understood that we have to take in the recent year. We have about 100,000 active investors, 220 employees. About a third of them are engineers. I mean, in the broad sense of uh, uh, DBA, IT, developers, QA, etc. cetera. Uh, we have two main platforms. One is the trading system and one is the uh, social investment network our open book, that's how we call it. And those platforms come in different uh, uh, products, uh, different um, uh, handsets and uh, devices. We have around 120 services, code services. We'll probably have much, much more once we'll go with a, a good service-oriented architecture. We do about 20 releases per week, that's uh, much more than we did uh, until recently. And we are a Windows shop, which calls for uh, some uh, challenges, especially as you scale up. And very important, as a finance company, as a finance institution, we are regulated, and regulation is uh, is both a, a pro and a con, like everything in life. It means we have to invest lots of money. We have to do many things uh, in a certain way. We cannot go to the cloud with everything we do. But it also means that our competition has a bigger barrier in order to try and do what we do. And uh, that's the con about it. And uh, DevOps is a, is a journey if, if you start as a big company, not, not so big, but 200 is enough. It's, it's a journey and uh, with every journey you have to be brave and uh, old Greeks said it a uh, long time before, fortune favors the bold. Um, so now for more details with uh, David. Thank you. 
So our story begins about a year ago when uh, we actually felt that we are really inefficient and uh, we have a lot of bottlenecks. Okay, it's actually uh, Itamar, our CIO, who tries to fight the inefficiency. Our problems are uh, big static environments, uh, one big environment of the whole ecosystem of eToro services, uh, which are built completely manually for dev, QA, and production environments. Uh, if we have problems during deployment or configuration uh, errors, uh, it can take uh, hours or even days of developers to try and fix them. We used to have very long iterations of weeks, sometimes even months. Uh, we used to work in waterfall methodology, and uh, it's very unpredictable and risky. Uh, we had a lot of uh, deployment uh, problems. Uh, things break. We don't understand why we lack uh, monitoring tools. I used to manage a team of eight people uh, about a year ago, and by taking two people out of the team, we actually proved that the team efficiently, team efficiency increase. And after we realized all our problems, we still still didn't know how to fix how to fix them, how to deal with them. And about a year ago, uh, winds of change. I call it winds of change started uh, to came to eToro. Uh, as part of it, we switched from waterfall to to Scrum. Uh, Scrum formalizes much better the development process and gives great transparency to the process. By by itself, it's not enough. Uh, about half a year ago, at the beginning of the, of the year, we had the, our first uh, eToro hackathon, which was an amazing experience. Uh, small teams could de deliver great products in just 48 hours, could build the great products, but uh, the hackathon also exposed our problems of static environments and uh, think that we can't we actually quickly deliver products to production. We started to learn what others doing. We met uh, Facebook engineers which uh, who explained about their development process. We met uh, our local guys from uh, Wix and Outbrain to learn how they do continuous delivery. Uh, we read uh, lots of materials in the internet. We, we started to visit conferences like DevOps Days. And uh, after we realized our problems and saw how others cope with, uh, with them and uh, what is DevOps, uh, we actually decided to establish a DevOps forum in the company, uh, a forum of five, six key people from different departments in R&D. Um, and we took a few offsites to discuss our problems. We started to map our gaps. This is the list. Uh, there, there, there was a lot of problems we knew about, even more which didn't knew about. Uh, we think how to tackle the problems and close the gaps. We set uh, an action plan. We build uh, phases to, clo to close the gaps. A uh, thought of uh, recruitment plan and uh, tried to give some ETAs uh, to the phases. We, we even think of uh, making a full stop for a few few months uh, in a Toro R&D, stop without features at all, just to, uh, to close the gaps and minimize the technical depth. We presented the plan to our management. Uh, this step is crucial. You must get management support to to proceed and to go on. The full stop wasn't accepted by the management, of course. The business must go on. Uh, we decided uh, to recruit, to build and recruit a new, a completely new team. We call it 
DevOps team, uh, which I lead uh, currently, the team was established for a ramp up period to minimize the technical debt. Uh, it's a team of professionals from uh, different fields uh, and uh, its purpose was actually to to bring the DevOps culture to organization, to start automate things, automating things, uh, establish new tools, monitoring tools, uh, continuous delivery, etc. Uh, we defined few DevOps KPIs. Uh, we still struggle to, with defining these KPIs. It's a real challenge. Uh, but it's important step to do as uh, you have to explain about the DevOps progress to the whole organization and uh, people who are not technical enough to understand it. We started to work uh, on the culture change. A um, few examples of new versus old culture. In the old culture, uh, product design a feature, developers develop, QA test it, IT deploy and monitor it. In the new architect, in the new culture, sorry, uh, we are a team with uh, shared res responsibilities and uh, developers actually responsible of technical design, developing, testing, deploying and monitoring. Another example of uh, new versus old culture. In the old culture, product is a set of features. In the new culture, product is a service, which is a combination of uh, features, uh, support, quality, and performance. As part of our culture changes, we started to discuss about focus. Uh, we started to invest more and more uh, time and efforts in our core business values and started to kill services which are out of focus and just waste our time. Uh, we talk a lot about self-service, uh, things like creating a virtual machine or setting a new metric in our monitoring system still requires uh, an IT person to do it, things which can be automated and uh, can be given to developers as a self-service. Uh, even installing a mouse or a keyboard now requires help this person to come to your desk and install it. Uh, we introduced uh, Freestyle Tuesdays. Uh, Tuesdays in Etoro are a free day, free of iteration. Uh, a day where engineers can uh, learn new things, uh, review their logs, or see how they can improve their applications, automate things, and uh, stuff like that. We used it at the beginning as a, as a ramp up to, to, learn what, to learn our developers what is unit testing, how they do unit testing. Hmm? Let's do it at the end. Thank you. Um, we established the Dev Academy. Uh, it's actually a set of lectures uh, where uh, any developer can, uh, or not no non-developer, any engineer can volunteer and uh, present uh, a topic he is experienced in. We started to to do boot camps for new employees. Uh, we just sit with the employee and explain them about the Toro, about how development process works, which tools do we use, stuff like that. Uh, we started to give more power to developers to increase their responsibility. Uh, we give them direct access to production to see their application uh, running in production, uh, to review their logs, uh, we invest uh, more and more in automation. We recruit few automation experts and uh, did some training to our current existing uh, QA personnel. Uh, we started to automate regressions, uh, API testing. Uh, developers, as I said, invest in uh, unit testing and integration tests. 
we decided to recruit uh, only professionals, full stack developers. Uh, we we believe their their ROI is much higher. Um, as part of uh, our review, we we saw a lot of problems uh, of collaboration between across the teams. Uh, and uh, as part of this, we decided to review our architectures. We are we, we are talking about our software architecture, system architecture. We are talking about uh, service-oriented architecture. Uh, we review our uh, big mo one big monolithic database policy and uh, started to break it to smaller databases. We build more and more uh, standard RESTful APIs to encapsulate our services. We, th we are working to establish a new infrastructure team, uh, just, to, just a team of developers uh, who build uh, common models and tools for development. Uh, we started uh, almost from scratch to build our continuous integration and continuous delivery. And uh, meanwhile, we do continuous disaster and continuous rollback. Uh, we, still that it's all, we still feel that it's only the beginning for us uh, and we are just learning to walk. But we also feel that the DevOps train has left the station for us and it's either you hope on it or you stay behind. And this is our progress in the, in the last four months. And now we will continue with the summary. Okay, uh, David said that the train left the station, but it's the Middle East, so we still don't know when it will get to its destination. Um, the problem that we handled was that everything was very slow. We also had production problems, but things are very slow. And what we need to remember that uh, it's not that you always have to use the same tools as in the past. So if things are slow, and you just tell people, okay, work harder, work faster, work more, it doesn't necessarily mean that you will gain what you need. And as it's written here, if you're on the edge of a cliff, a step forward might not be the best action to do. Small batches. For me, small batches is the, one of the very, very basics of everything that we do around DevOps. It's uh, the same thing in uh, Lean, in theory of constraints, in many operational, uh, um, in many theories of uh, operations. Whenever you go to an operation that produces something, inventory is something that kills the, the organization. And if you have big batches, you have inventory. If you have inventory, uh, it uh, gets uh, messed up. It's not relevant after a while. You cannot uh, do things fast enough to react to needs and to the market. So inventory for these and for many other reasons is a great evil. And small batches reduce inventory. And the problem I always had when I worked with the operations uh, in uh, in software development was that when it's not a software development it's quite easy to do small batches because you produce the same thing all the time but in software development it's a code and it's a different code every time so how the hell do you do very small batches and that's the main thing that devops brings to the table it's the ability to uh, do continuous delivery which means small batches and all the automation of the testing and the monitoring around it really allows you to do what you could not do some years before. Did anyone here uh, heard of Dunbar's number? How much is it about? 
yeah, 150 to 200, at least for human. Uh, for apes, it's uh, probably around 50. So what's Dunbar's number? Dunbar's number is accounting for the number of people that we as humans or apes as apes can uh, main uh, can retain a connection of uh, a social connection so think of a community of uh, 20 people everyone knows each other usually there are no crimes they they feel they feel as friends they know exactly what it means what everyone is good at and less good at etc you grow up to 100 it still works but if you're in a city of 100,000 or even in a bigger village of a thousand, it's not working anymore. People do not mind to hurt each other because they don't really know them. They don't really understand even that they hurt them. It's the same with, uh, by the way, there are communities in the world that once they go up to 150 or 200, they split and half the community stays and half the community goes somewhere else. So in companies, it's the same. That's the main reason why you feel so different in your 100, 200 people's uh, organization, unlike what it was when it was three people and 20 people. It's not that people are bad suddenly, it's just that it's, we're not meant to live in an organization of 200 people and really know exactly what everyone is doing and how everyone will react to everything. You can break the organization into two. And by the way, there are companies uh, that are doing it, but you can also work differently. And the DevOps practices actually allow small teams to work uh, independently, create APIs, monitor what they're doing, be responsible end to end, but on a small piece of what's happening in the organization and thus allow a bigger organization to exist without everyone needing to interact with each other all the time. So uh, if you'll start feeling problems around 120 people, Dunbar is the reason. Um, so things to remember, we're about the size of uh, where Dunbar is uh, suggesting to split things up or change them. Uh, we have massive changes to do in architecture and in our culture. Um, we have to do it while the organization still works and still growing and it's growing very nicely all the time during those changes. Uh, we ident identify the Archimedes points as those cultural changes, but especially at the start to get the management support. Uh, it's slow, it's never fast. You can never predict at the beginning how, a lo how long it will take exactly. Uh, the, the many unknowns will reveal as you go and you will solve them as you go. Uh, you must define end goals, but revisit them all the time. And it was spoken many times here, the people on the bus are really what matters because you don't really know where the bus is going. So you need the best people there to decide where it should go at every point in time. And this is the, what we usually perceive of success, a straight road to success. This is probably what it is. There are ups and downs. And uh, as long as you know what your end goal and, you, and in the bigger term of things, in the wider scope, you feel that you really go there, then everything is OK. Thank you. All right, uh, but I'll make it short. Uh, my question is, do developers actually use the Freestyle Tuesdays or do they, I mean, to do innovative or, you know, out of the box things or do they keep, you know, keep the time to work on their usual projects? Okay, so actually we presented the Tuesdays even before we start, we recruited the DevOps team. Okay, we, the purpose of these days is not to develop new cool things in the environment which is not supporting developing new cool, new cool things okay the the purpose of these days uh, was to 
to learn how we get to DevOps culture, okay? Uh, it was uh, a lot of talks and discussions what, uh, what, why developers should be responsible uh, end to end to their, of their code. Uh, what is unit testing? Why do they need to do unit testing? How they learn it? Uh, monitoring tools. Uh, it's it, it, it's just for uh, for the ramp up, and uh, it didn't work in all teams very well because big teams with uh, their iterations uh, struggle to you know to to stop in the middle of the week and. Uh, continue after that uh, but uh, but it works it uh, it gives time for developers to do some extra things things that are not features i'll add something we really wish those tuesdays to become innovation uh, place we feel that what we need right now is not the innovation is the devops so people use the, this time, most of them really do. And uh, it's really about the things that everyone is saying, oh, I must learn how to use this monitoring tool. I want to read this part of this book and I want to search to Google some uh, ways to do some things I know I need to do, but I never have time for this. And it's not in half an hour I can do at night. I really need few hours to do it and Tuesday is the answer. The question was whether the content of those free Tuesdays is uh, known, monitored, and uh, tracked. First of all, the important thing is that the iteration planning of the known developments is not including Tuesdays. So if like we do, we usually go for two weeks iterations, sometimes three in some teams. Those two weeks iterations mean four days of work in each week. About the last day, it varies from team to team. In some teams, every team member can choose whatever he's doing and just put it to, uh, in our case, to a Trello and everybody else can see and share what others were doing. In other teams, it's more united and the team leader is sitting with the team and together they decide where they will focus about in the next few weeks. This one will learn a new tool. This one will uh, do some uh, logging they were missing for a lot of time. Uh, and very important about those Tuesdays, it's changing, it's agile, it's not something that this is the way we do it and this is the way we will do it forever. In every team, it changes over time to accommodate for what the team really needs. The important thing is that there is this vacant time to do things that are beyond what management needs now, product needs now, uh, what's urgent now. More questions? The thing is that really stopping everything is not always uh, practical because you may say you want to do it, but it's not a reality when the daily things come, you just need to do things and you cannot even plan half a year ahead what you'll do. So we also understood with, that we don't know enough about what this change means in order to stop everything now and start climbing this mountain. We have to start climbing this mountain slowly. Main thing was to bring many people, to bring some know-hows we did not have, or even ask the questions we did not know to ask ourselves. So we just currently pile up those things and have those initial success stories. And as we'll go, will probably have some uh, stop somewhere. So in this team, they, they will stop for a month and do only things about it. And then in another team, and maybe sometimes in few teams, but we understood we need to make a better ramp up because before we can go to, to this stage. And management, uh, management is 
about the end goals at the end. So as long as you go, I, I, by the way, what I learned in the process is not to call things, let's stop doing this and do that because everyone will just work harder once we'll go with the DevOps change. So what you need to say is we're working all the time. The only question is to start about the next two weeks if this whole time will be invested in things the business must have or things the infrastructure of the business must have. Thank you.